Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are diving deep into one of the most important and sometimes confusing topics in automotive engineering, functional safety. You might have heard people talking about ISO 26262, ASIL levels and safety goals. But most of the time, it all sounds like a theory. Today, we are going to make it completely practical. I will take you through real world automotive examples that match each ASIL level A, B, C and D. And we will go step by step through how functional safety is actually applied in the industry. By end of this video, you won't just know what ASIL stands for. You will understand exactly how safety engineers identify risk, analyze failures, define safety goals and design systems that uh, protect lives. We will go from a simple parking sensor to an airbag system, showing how the level of safety efforts and uh, testing increases the ASIL level rises. So stay tuned till the end because this one will truly help you see how safety shapes everything inside a modern vehicle. Step 1. Selecting 4 features To understand ASIL levels practically, let's start with the 4 automotive features, each representing a different safety integrity level. Imagine a car that has a rear parking sensor, a cruise control system, a lane keep assist function and of course airbags. These systems all serve different purposes. But what's interesting is how the consequence of their failure differ. If the parking sensor fails, maybe you will just bump a wall. That's inconvenient but not life threatening. But if an airbag fails during a collision, it could mean a fatal injury. Between those two extremes, you have systems like cruise control and lane keep assist, which can cause moderate to severe hazards depending on the situation. So, these four features perfectly represents the hierarchy of ASIL A for the least critical and D for the most critical safety systems. Step 2 Item Definition Before we analyze any risk, we must clearly define what each system or item actually does, what inputs it uses and what outputs it produces. This is called item definition. Let's take the cruise control system as an example. Its main purpose is to maintain a constant vehicle speed set by the driver without requiring them to press the accelerator. The system takes input from sensors such as the vehicle speed sensor, the brake pedal switch and the accelerator pedal position. Based on those inputs, it sends commands to the engine control unit to adjust throttle levels. It operates primarily during highway driving conditions. This process of defining the item's purpose, interfaces and environmental context help us later when we start identifying hazards. You can think it like uh, laying down the blueprint of the system before you begin your safety analysis. Step 3. Hazard Analysis and Risk Assessment Once the system is defined, we move to one of the most crucial parts of functional safety. The Hazard Analysis and Risk Assessment or ARA. This is where engineers systematically identify potential hazards, estimate the risk associated with each one and assign an ASIL level based on three key factors, severity, exposure and controllability. Let's go through each example. This table is very important if you want to assign the ASIL level. Based on these three factors, we will assign the different ASIL levels for different features. Let's move on. For the parking sensor, a failure might mean that the sensor does not detect an obstacle behind the car. The driver could bump into an object while uh, reversing. The severity here is low, which we donate as S1 since it might only cause minor vehicle damage. The exposure is moderate E2 because parking happens regularly but not constantly. The controllability is I C1. Since the driver can usually see the obstacle and stop the car manually, the ASIL derived for this combination is ASIL A, meaning it's a low risk function that still deserves attention but does not threaten life. Now let's look at cruise control. Suppose it fails to deactivate when the brake pedal is pressed. This could cause the vehicle to keep accelerating unintentionally, possibly leading to a minor collision. The severity is medium S2, exposure is high E3, 
because highway driving is frequent and uh, controllability is medium C2. Since the driver might take a second or two to react, this results in SLB, a moderate safety level requiring stronger checks and validation. For lane keep assist, the hazard is more severe. Imagine the camera or sensor giving a false detection and the system steers the vehicle in the wrong direction. The severity here is I S3 because it could lead to a serious collision. The exposure is I E4 since highway driving is common and controllability is medium C2 as the driver might not immediately correct the error. This combination gives SLC, a system that requires redundancy and careful design. Finally, for the airbag deployment system, the worst case hazard is that the airbag fails to deploy during the crash. The severity is very high S3, exposure is high E4 and controllability is low C3 because the driver can't do anything in that situation. This is classified as SLD. The most critical level where system failure could directly result in loss of life. Step 4 Defining Safety Goals Once the assay level is known, we move on to defining safety goals. These are high level objectives that describe what the system must do to remain safe. For each of our examples, we can define a clear goal. For parking sensor, the goal is that the system must always alert the driver about obstacles within 1 meter of the rear bumper. Even if one sensor fails, the driver should be warned about the malfunction. For the cruise control, the goal is that it must always deactivate immediately when the brake pedal is pressed. For lane keep assist, the goal is that it must not apply any incorrect steering torque based on false lane detection. And for the airbag system, the safety goal is that it must deploy within about 30 milliseconds after a verified crash event. Safety goal acts as the guiding principles for the entire safety design. Every software algorithm, every hardware component and every test in the future must align with these goals to ensure the system behaves safely even under fault conditions. Step 5 Functional Safety Concept After defining the safety goals, engineers move into creating the Functional Safety Concept or FSC. This stage defines how each system will achieve its safety goals through high-level functional strategies. It's about building logical safety measures that detect, prevent or control faults before they lead to hazards. For example, in the case of the parking sensor, a simple diagnostic check can run every few seconds to verify that all sensors are active. If one fails, the driver gets a dashboard warning. In the cruise control system, the brake signal is given the highest priority so pressing the brake instantly cancels throttle commands. For lane keep assist, redundancy is introduced through sensor fusion using both camera and radar data. So if one fails, the other confirms the lane information. And in the airbag system, two independent crash sensors can be used with redundant microcontrollers ensuring that even one fails, the other can still trigger the deployment. At this level, we are still working conceptually. We are not at designing circuits or writing code. The goal is to make sure we have strong safety logic in place before we go into technical implementation. Step 6 Technical Safety Concept Once the functional concepts are set, we go one step deeper into the Technical Safety Concept or TSC. This stage focuses on the actual architecture. How the hardware and software will work together to realize the safety mechanisms. For instance, the braking sensor's microcontroller can monitor sensor signals every 100 milliseconds. And if any sensor gives a constant or invalid reading, it can trigger a fault code. In cruise control, two independent brake input lines are used to ensure redundancy and any mismatch forces the ECU to disable acceleration. Lane Kimp Assist system often use dual core processors that constantly compare each other outputs. If they disagree, the system switches to a safe state. And for the airbags, ECU, multiple accelerometers and watchdog circuit monitor system health continuously, ensuring the deployment system remains reliable even if one component fails. At this stage, the design starts becoming hardware specific 
and code specific integrating all the safety measures that the previous steps defined step 7 implementation testing and validation now comes the execution phase we implement test and validate everything each SL level defines how rigorous testing must be for SLA systems like parking sensors basic unit test and integration test are usually sufficient SL beat systems like cruise control requires code reviews traceability from safety goals to requirements and more systematic verification SLC systems demand fault injection testing where engineers simulate component failures to see how the system responds and for SLD systems such as airbags we need the more intensive validation hardware in the loop simulations redundancy verification and even real crash tests under controlled environments to ensure that the safety functions always activate when needed this phase proves that the safety design actually works in both normal and faulty conditions Without this validation, the system can't be certified as functionally safe. Step 8 Safety Case and Documentation Finally, everything that has been designed, analyzed and tested is compiled into what's called a safety case. This is a complete body of evidence showing that the system fulfills ISO 26262 safety requirements. It includes the results of the hazard analysis, the defined safety goals, both the functional and technical safety concepts and all test reports. This documentation is extremely important because it proves to customers, regulators and OEMs that the product is safe and that all necessary safety process have been followed. Conclusion And that's how the functional safety is practically applied across four SL levels from A to D. Each system, whether it's a parking sensor or an airbag ECU, goes through the same structured process. But the intensity and rigor increase as the risk grows. SLA systems focus on simple diagnostics. SLB system prioritize control logic and verification. SLC systems demand redundancy and fault tolerance. And SLD systems require full-scale safety architecture and fail-safe operation. In summary, functional safety is not just about following a standard. It's about thinking deeply how people could be armed if a system fails and designing everything to make sure that never happens. It's mindset that ensures reliability, trust and protection for everyone on the road. So if you found this explanation useful, make sure to hit the like button, share it with your automotive friends and subscribe for more real world engineering content. Thank you for watching this video.